Watch the narcissist in action. Bedroom tirade. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Those of you who want to receive an advanced education about the behaviour of narcissists have been finding my series about Watch the Narcissist in Action extremely useful. I first provided you with some video footage which showed a tirade that took place between the narcissist Mike and his victim, his intimate partner, primary source, Rose, whilst she was driving and he was in the passenger seat. It provided you with a breakdown of the various manipulations and the dynamic between the two of them. I then provided you with three videos worth of breakdown of various hoovers that he sent towards her, again helping you understand more about the type of manipulations that he utilises and the dynamic between the two of them. I'm pleased to see uh, that this generated uh, observations, debate and, in, and engagement by you all. I would urge you to share these videos as widely as you possibly can because they're excellent teaching tools. I also reinforce that the victim in question has made these videos freely available and I'm utilising them for the purposes of analysis to not only validate what she has experienced but uh, to enable people to understand real life examples not just for instance where there is the behaviour that is occasioned by celebrities. I'm now going to provide you with an another video which shows a further interaction between Mike and Rose, between narcissist and victim. This particular clip was recorded directly before Rose was supposed to leave for work. Mike has arrived as arranged to look after the children. The discussion revolves around Mike telling Rose to call in and quit her job. You'll recall this was something which was referenced in the first driving video and also in some of the Hoovers. Essentially, Rose has to argue with Mike and cajole him to watch the children, even though it's been previously agreed. This demonstrates, of course, the fact of the narcissist conditional asterisk, that the narcissist agrees to do something, but there is always that invisible asterisk, which means that the narcissist, through that sense of entitlement and lack of accountability, is allowed to change the deal to renege on the arrangements. And Mike is doing that. That what he's doing, of course, is offering to watch the children as part of control, but that he doesn't actually want to do so because as a narcissist he has no emotional empathy for the children. And of course, that he wants to spoil her ability to go to work by prompting an argument and that he's focused, of course, on controlling her and causing a problem for her in the moment rather than actually getting on with the job of looking after the children. I'd invite you, as you watch, to see if you can spot the various manipulations taking place, that you can identify the various dynamics that are occurring, and then I will provide you with my unrivaled analysis of what's occurring. Here comes the first clip. This is for the kids. This is not for me. If it was for me, I would say, I don't care who watches the kids. I'm finally out. I get to go do whatever I want to do, right? I wouldn't be trying to fight for their supervision. I wouldn't be trying to fight so hard for it. That's what I'm demonstrating right now, that I'm fighting for who I approve and who I don't approve. Because I do love them. Because I do care. This is me demonstrating how much I do. I'm literally fighting, kicking and screaming for their safety and for their for my approval, for who I think is a best fit to watch them. The people that you choose are not even close to compete to the standards. Mike. Mike commences with a monologue, which shows grandiosity. He has his intimate partner, primary source, as a captive audience. She's in the room with him. And here his narcissism drives him to an essentially grandstand, 
You could almost picture him with elbow on a mantelpiece, a glass of scotch in his hand as he pontificates. This is for the kids. This is not for me. If it was for me, I would say, I don't care who watches the kids. I'm finally out. I get to do whatever I want to do, right? I wouldn't be trying to fight for their supervision. I wouldn't be trying to fight so hard for it. That's what I'm demonstrating right now. I'm fighting for who I approve and who I don't approve because I do love them, because I do care. This is me demonstrating how much I do. I'm literally fighting, kicking and screaming for their safety and for my approval, for who I think is the best fit to watch them. The people that you choose are not even close to co to compete to the standards. Self-important. Notice how many times he references I and me. It's all about him. There's the, the clear contradiction. This is not for me, when actually it is. This is about the assertion of control as he demonstrates that he is holier than thou that he's the one that's fighting so hard for their supervision, that he's the one that's fighting for who to, should be approved, that he's demonstrating how much he does. Oh, look at him, oh noble knight that he is, fighting, kicking and screaming for their safety. In actual fact, he doesn't give a rat's ass about them because as a narcissist, he doesn't. He thinks he does. His narcissism as a likely low mid-range narcissist, compels him to believe that he does care about them. That it compels him to believe that this is him, that he's a decent person. And of course, there has to be the belittlement of her by suggesting that the people that she chooses aren't even close to compete to the standards. I'm brilliant, you're awful. And he stands there pontificating as he talks all about himself, showing his level of self-absorption. You won't watch your own kids, so I have to find somebody to watch them. It doesn't put money in my pocket or food in my stomach to do that. Then don't worry about who I find to watch them. I am, because they're my kids. Well, if you're you gonna know... continue to be a retard, then somebody should hit you in the head with a hammer so you literally are retarded. I don't know why you want to walk the earth blind, deaf, and dumb. You don't currently have a job. I'm going to get one. I could have had one today. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. Just because I don't currently have a job does not mean anything. I already explained to you I had interviews and they demanded this. I'm going to say, fuck you. I'm going to go get a job. And everybody's going to be like, holy shit, Mike has a great job. Mike's making money. Rose then states, Mike, you won't watch your own kids, so I have to find somebody to watch them. Challenge fuel. Suggestion that he won't watch his own kids is a threat to his control. Mike, it doesn't put money in my pocket or food in my stomach to do that. Notice again, there isn't any focus on the children whatsoever. The focus is all about him, his needs, his money, his need for food. Rose, then don't worry about who I find, watched, find to watch them. Mike, I am because they're my kids, triangulation with children. Rose, well, you know. Mike, if you're going to continue to be a retard, insult, then somebody should hit you in the head with a hammer so you literally are retarded. Ignition of fury, insult, threat of violence, absence of emotional empathy. I don't know why you want to walk the earth blind, deaf and dumb. Insult. Rose ignores that but simply points out you don't currently have a job. Mike, I'm going to get one. I could have had one today magical thinking. He hasn't got one. He couldn't have got one today, but he needs to nullify that threat to control that suggests that he's a loser without a job. Rose, of course, eternally sceptical, responds with, mm-hmm. He picks up on that as, again, challenge fuel by stating, there's no mm-hmm. Just because I don't currently have a job does not mean anything. Dismissiveness. I already explained to you I had interviews and they demanded this. I'm going to say, fuck you. I'm going to get a job and everyone's going to be like, holy shit, Mike has a great job. Mike's making money. Delusion. Magical thinking. He thinks that he'll just get a job and that immediately, because he'll make a lot of money, and people will turn around and worship him for it. 
Notice there's no suggestion of, I'm going to get a job to support my family. No. It's all about how it makes him look. That people would admire him. That they'll get down on their knees and go, All hail the mighty Mike. He has a job. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he brilliant? Look at him making money. All of everything that he talks about, it's all about him. He insults his partner and talks about how great he is. You know, then you should have let me keep those interviews. No, because those interviews were crackheads and niggers. I made it very clear. No crackheads and no niggers. You tried that before. It was a disaster. Mike, you had sex with black girls, so I don't know why you're saying This isn't about me. This is about them. You need to get me out of the picture. You're not going to work today. You're quitting your job today. The more you say shit, the more your game gets shut down. The more you piss me off, closer you get to work, the more I'm not going to let you leave. You I'm asking you to cops. get out of my room. You can call the cops. You can call the cops. You can call 20 cops. Cops can't do shit. They're going to say, why the fuck did you do this? And I'm going to explain to them, and I'm going to show the pictures. I'm going to say, do you got kids? Like, he's going to say, yeah, I got kids. I'm going to say, would you want to have these fucking people watch your kids? He's going to be like, no, 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 no. Hell no. And guess what? They're going to say, you know what? This kid right here is fighting for his kid's safety because the girl wants to hire fucking meth heads and crazy shit. They're going to look at you like you're just a ghetto white trash bitch in the ghetto. And they're going to look at me like a guy trying to fight for what is right. That's exactly what it's going to look like. You can try to wear your TSA badge and put Windex all over the badge and make it look shiny to make it seem like, see, look at me to him. But all you're doing is just creating an illusion, a mirage. Mike, you won't watch the girls, but you won't let me hire a babysitter. I will watch them for two weeks if you can right now sign a document stating that you really are going to put in your two weeks. I don't want to put in my two-week notice. I want the proof. I need to work to support my kids. did you say you don't want to put in the two-week notice? I need to work. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. Don't talk. Did you just say you don't want to put in your two-week notice? I don't. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yeah. Yes or no? Not yeah. Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Okay. I don't want to live here anymore. I want to work then jobs and times that I want to work. Then work. Rose responds, you know what? Then you should have let me keep those interviews. Evidently, he has forced her to cancel the interviews for childminders. Mike responds, no, because those interviews were crackheads and niggers. I made it very clear, no crackheads and no niggers. You tried that before, it was a disaster. He's slurring, smearing the individuals that were for the interviews, utilising reference and being drug takers and using a racial slur as well, demonstrating what an unpleasant individual he is and, of course, the base nature of his manipulations whereby he triangulates Rose with those descriptions of the people that she's trying to hire for a job. He's dismissive of them. Rose immediately points out his errant uh, contradiction she explains, Mike, you had sex with black girls, so I don't know why you're saying this, which shows the contrarian nature of the individual, that he will have sex with black women, but then uses a racist term to describe black people. Mike then explodes as a consequence of that hypocrisy being pointed out to him. The challenge is such that it ignites his heated fury. This isn't about me. He erupts. This is about them. You need to get me out of the picture. You're not going to work today. So he's determining that she shouldn't work even though she's the breadwinner. You're quitting your job today. The more you say shit, the more your game gets shut down. The more you piss me off, the closer you get to work. The more I'm not going to get you leave. You can call the cops. Thus, he dictates to her when she should be working, having no regard to the actual economic situation they have, that he is telling her that she's not going to go to work because he doesn't want to watch the children, but then where's the money going to come from? Rose then seeks to assert a boundary. I'm asking you to get out of my room. Mike responds, you can call the cops. You can call the cops. You can call 20 cops. Cops can't do shit. Arrogance, dismissiveness. They're going to say, why the fuck did you do this? I'm going to explain to them, use of threat, and I'm going to show the pictures and say, do you got kids? Like he's going to say, yeah, I got kids. I'm going to say, would you want to have these fucking people watch your kids? 
And he's going to be like, no, 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 hell no. Thus, Mike is triangulating Rose with both the police and a scenario by way of threat that he would show the police pictures of the people that she was looking to hire. And guess what? They're going to say, you know what? This kid right here is fighting for his kid's safety because the girl wants to hire fucking meth heads and crazy shit. Accordingly, this once again shows the deluded nature of Mike that he envisages this scenario and he uses this to threaten Rose to say, if you call the police, I'm just going to show them who you're going to hire and the cops are going to look at these and think, hang on a second, this guy here is just trying to protect his kids. He's the good guy. You're trying to hire crackheads. What kind of mother are you? This is a typical manipulation of the narcissist by way of triangulated threat. Commonly, the narcissist will present themselves through the utilization of a facade to authority individuals such as the police that they are calm, collected, and they're doing the right thing and will seek to portray the victim as the problem that the victim is hysterical, that they are the abuser. In this scenario, he's suggesting that she is a useless mother who's trying to hire crackheads to look after the children. He continues by saying, they're going to look at you like you are just a ghetto white trash bitch, belittlement, in the ghetto. And they're going to look at me like a guy trying to fight for what is right. He has, of course, a very inflated sense of his own abilities and worth. That's exactly what it's going to look like. You can try to wear your TSA badge and put Windex all over the badge to make it look shiny, to make it seem like, see, look at me, he's exhibiting his envy because she has a job and that he sees that that has a degree of status with it. But he need that fact of her having status in that job threatens his own sense of superiority. So he immediately needs to attack it. But all you're doing is just creating an illusion, a mirage, which, of course, is belittlement by him because it isn't an illusion. She does have a job and she has a TSA badge. Rose then protests. Mike, you won't watch the girls, but you won't let me hire a babysitter. Demonstrating the dilemma that she experiences. Mike states, I will watch them for two weeks if you can right now sign a document stating that you really are going to put in your two weeks issuing a demand. Rose loses her temper a little and shouts, I don't want to put in my two-week notice. She provides him, of course, with fuel. Mike, I want the proof. Rose, I need to work to support my kids. Mike, okay, did you just say that you don't want to put in your two weeks notice? Is that what you said? She clearly did say that, but of course, he's using that against her. He's triangulating her with her own words. Rose, I need to work. Mike, wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Don't talk. Notice the condescending way that he said, no, you've got to stop and listen to me. Did you just say you don't want to put in your two weeks notice? Is that what you said? Rose, I don't. Mike, is that what you said? Yes or no? Notice that she's confirmed it at least twice, but he's still going on at her. Rose, yeah, she responds in a sarcastic tone. Mike, Yes or a no, not yeah, yes or a no. Her response of yeah is challenge fuel to him and he needs to attack it. Yes, says Rose. Mike, yes, okay, I don't want to live here anymore. Immediately he throws his rattle out of the pram. I want to work jobs and times, I want to work. Then work, responds Rose, pointing out that once again he's all talk about what he wants to do but he's very short on the action, typical behaviour of a narcissist. I don't want to have these shady people watch my kids all day, alone in your house, so that they can get raped, kidnapped, killed, neglected, not fed, while whoever is stealing shit out of your house, stealing your PlayStation 4, or breaking shit, or snooping through your closet and shit, like going in here and snooping through all of your shit, because that's what these types of people will do. Sorry, what are they going to see, my clothes? You don't care, Ooh. do you? If they want to look at my dresses, they can. I don't have anything worth stealing. This is why we're done. You don't get it. Kids. You're so trying to make Skyler. me put in a two week notice in so that what? Then what? Wrong, my, me and my kids are going to starve? You're going to come with me. Your mother's going to be put on her knees and she's going to be killed. Along with her father and her mother if they're still standing on earth. I will do this for you 
Like You're gonna good. kill her mother for them. For for them, yes, and me. You're gonna kill me for them. Yes. That's messed up that you would even tell them that you're going to kill it's their mother. It's messed up that you want to have meth heads and niggers, gangster thugs, along with my children. That's messed up. That's the threat. Mike, I'm not going to hire gonna a meth addict threat. or a drug addict That's to watch the are. kids. That's who they are. That's who you considered. That's who you gave your address to. No, Mike, that's not the case. That is the case. No, my it's not. My entire family already is aware of the case. My dad left you voicemails saying you are not going to do that. You are not going to have Because you showed because him Because I showed things. him the people that you were considering. No, Mike, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you Rose, didn't. Rose, because I took the pictures from your phone. You didn't show them the people I was considering. You Amy showed them people. Lexi. I showed them Amy and Lexi, the people that you had interviews for today and yesterday. Actually, no, I had a white girl with blonde hair today. She's not coming through. No, none of these people are coming through. They're all dead. They're not real people. It's just a dream and a fairy tale world out there, Rose. You need there follows a long pause. It might be that Mike's doing something. It might be that he's glaring at the victim at this juncture. He then continues by stating, I don't want to have these shady people watch my kids all day. Smearing, suggestion that he cares for his children. Alone in your house so that they can get raped, kidnapped, killed, neglected, not fed. Catastrophization, smearing. While whoever is stealing shit out of your house, stealing your PlayStation 4, breaking shit or snooping through your closet and shit, like going in here and snooping through all of your shit, because that's what these types of people will do. Once again, demonstrating his paranoia in relation to people. Rose replies, sorry, what are they going to see? My clothes? Ooh. Mike, you don't care, do you? Rose responds sarcastically, if they want to look at my dresses, they can. I don't have anything worth stealing. Mike replies, this is why we're done. You don't get it. Kids? Zoe? Skylar? He announces, trying to draw in the kids' attention and triangulate Rose with them. Rose, you're trying to make me put in a two-week notice from work. Then what? Me and my kids are going to starve. Mike continues to triangulate. Zoe, Skylar, you're going to come with me. Your mother's going to be put on her knees and she's going to be killed. Along with her father and her mother, if they are still standing on earth, I will do this for you. Now, one of the children can be heard in the background, but it's not clear if they're exactly in the room. But Mike's trying to call the children into the room to triangulate Rose with them. And also showing his complete absence of emotional empathy. He's talking to the children or announcing so that they can hear that he's going to kill their mother. Use of threat, absence of emotional empathy. Rose replies, you're going to kill their mother for them. Mike, for them, yes, and me. Rose, you're going to kill them, kill me for them. Mike replies, yes. Rose responds, that's messed up that you would even tell them that you would want to kill their mother. Again, challenge fuel. Mike counters this, trying to nullify the threat to control by saying it's messed up that you want to have meth heads and niggers, gangster thugs alone with my children. That's messed up. That's the threat. I am going to eliminate the threat. Once again, demonstrating that he is the saviour, the white knight that rides in. Rose replies, Mike, I'm not going to hire a meth addict or a drug addict to watch the kids. Mike, that's who they are. That's who they are. That's who you considered. That's who you gave your address to. Now, what's happening here is that Mike doesn't want Rose working because if she does, in his world, she's superior to him. She's earning money. It also means that she's away from him, which makes it more difficult for him to control her. Therefore, his narcissism drives him to do whatever he can to prevent her from working. For instance, withdrawing his own child-minding services. Or, when she decides, okay, I won't rely on you, Mike, I'll get a child-minder, that a combination of his paranoia and the necessity for control causes him to basically smear potential candidates by suggesting, no, 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 you can't get any of them anybody to child mind because they are all notice the black and white thinking of the narcissist they're all meth heads and crack addicts and rapists and thieves 
his narcissism is causing that blanket smearing of any potential candidate to prevent them from being hired. Because if they're hired, that means that Rose can go out to work, which affects his sense of control. Mike responds, that's who they are, that's who they are, that's who you considered, that's who you gave your address to. Rose counters him, no, Mike, that's not the case. Mike, then showing ignition of fury with a raised voice, that is the case. My entire family is already aware of the case, triangulation. My dad left you voicemails saying you are not going to do that. You are not going to have shady people. Rose counters him, because you showed him fake things. Mike answers, because I showed him the people you were considering. Rose, no, Mike, you didn't. Mike, yes, I did. Rose, no, you didn't. Mike, yes, I did, Rose, because I took the pictures from your phone. Revision of history. You didn't show them the people I was considering. You showed them people. Mike, I showed them Amy and Lexi, the people that you had interviews for today and yesterday. Rose, actually, no. I had a white girl with blonde hair today. Mike, she's not coming through. None of these people are coming through. They're all dead. They're not real people. It's just a dream and a fairy tale for it out there, Rose. A splash of word salad thrown in there suggesting that these people are dead. Well, they're patently not. But his narcissism is desperate to prevent her from going out to work. And that means ensuring that he shouldn't child mind and that she can't get anybody to do it, thus she has to remain at home. Of course, that means she can't earn, which will have an impact upon her ability to cater for the family. But he doesn't care about that. All his narcissism cares about is controlling her by stopping her going out to work. I need to leave. I want to. I really want to. And I'm going to. As soon as you call your job and say, emergency quit or whatever. It's always hiding behind no, me from is. you. That's why you should do the right thing right now. Stop wasting your time. Your daughter is hiding behind me from then you. Then call your job. Make the call. I'm out the door. You can do Okay, first little... of all, that's not even how it works. I have to let, write a letter of resignation. You <laughs> no, don't you... just call and be like, I quit there in two do. weeks. No, you write a no, letter of me, resignation. Tell me the law in the universe that says you can't do that. You write a letter of resignation. Do you want me to call for you? Because I will. Mike, because they need written down documentation of your resignation. It can't just be verbal. Then say you'll be in there tomorrow or something to do that. But you're not coming in today. I am coming in today. I don't see how that's going to happen. I'm leaving. You're here. I have to leave for work. I'm here trying to negotiate. But you're just no, not you're me not. You're forcing with. me to put in a resignation. Yes, because if I don't, you won't. Why would I? Because I'm leaving. So? And because me and my family will not allow to have these people. When we come here while so you're So you and work, your family won't allow me to have a babysitter because you won't watch them. Here's the thing. Don't speak. Don't interrupt. Listen. While you're gone. You're going to have these people here, right? I have the key to the front door. These are my kids. I call the cops. Most of my belongings are in here. Your address is on my ID. I have mail in my truck that prove that I legally live here. When I bring the cops here, the cops are going to walk in the house with me and they're going to say, yeah, this kid legally lives here. His belongings are in here. These are his kids. They're going to take a look at your crazy fucking babysitters and they're going to say, what the fuck is going on, Mike? you got to fix this. The cop. I'm going to ask them to leave because I'm going to say, you don't have my consent or my permission to watch my kids. I don't trust you unless you can go give me a drug test right now in front of this officer. That per Look at me. Look at me, Rose. Don't look at her. Look at me. She doesn't have any power yet. I'm taking care of my daughter, Mike. Look at me. She doesn't have any power. I got the power. There you go, baby. I got the power. You fucking robot, blue-eyed dragon. I got the fucking power. Look at me. Just call me a dragon. Look at me. You only want to do the exact opposite of what I stand for and oppose. Because you only do it to piss me off. You're just sitting here harassing me. Then let me harass you and get this off my chest. Because I feel a lot better after I do it. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. Either way you lose. We can do this the easy way. Or we can do this the really, really nasty, ugly, hard way. I'm giving you the option. With my graces. And my whatever I have in me. To do this the easiest way. I don't want to have to do this. You are forcing me to do this. Literally forcing my hand. 
the people that you recommend, the people that you consider, these people are a million times worse than me than you can even imagine. Continuing with the analysis, Rose, sounding notably tired by all of this, you need to leave, again trying to enforce a boundary. Mike replies, I want to. I really want to. And I'm going to as soon as you call your job and say emergency quit or whatever. Again, he's needing to not only enforce control over her in this moment, but nullify the threat to control that's posed by her going to work. Rose explains, Zoe's hiding behind me from you, showing her emotional empathy, looking out for her child. Mike then lowers his voice. I know she is. That's why you should do the right thing, triangulation with child, right now. Stop wasting time. Call your job. Showing his sense of an entitlement by ordering her around. Rose, sounding distressed. Your daughter is hiding behind me from you. Mike responds, and you can tell that his ignited fury is trying to burst through. Then call your job. Make the call. I'm out the door. You can do your little... Rose protests, OK, first of all, that's not how it works. I have to write a letter of resignation. You don't just call and be like, I quit in two weeks. No, you write a letter of resignation. She's pointing out to him the realities of the situation. Mike dismisses this. Tell me the law in the universe that says you can't do that. Rose, you write a letter of resignation. Mike, do you want me to call for you? Because I will. Use of threat. Rose, Mike, because they need written down documentation of resignation, it can't just be verbal. Mike then changes the goalpost slightly by saying, then say you'll be in there tomorrow or something to do that, but you're not coming in today. Sense of entitlement ordering her around. Rose, I am coming in today. Challenge fuel. Mike, I don't see how that's going to happen. I'm leaving. Use of threat to cause her to stay at home and miss her work. Rose, you're here. I have to leave for work. Challenge fuel. Mike, I'm here trying to negotiate which again shows the delusion of this man. He's not negotiating at all, but he thinks he is. He's ordering her. That is not negotiation. But you're just not giving me nothing to work with, i.e. it's your fault. You're the problem here. Rose, no, you're not. You're forcing me to put in a resignation. Mike, yes, because if I don't, you won't, i.e. it's your fault. You're not doing what's required. Rose, why would I? Mike, because I'm leaving. Rose, so... Mike, and because me and my family will not allow you, triangulation, to have these people, when we come here, when you're at work, Rose, so you and your family will not allow me to have a babysitter because you won't watch them. Again, that threat is controlled by suggesting that this is a ridiculous situation. Mike, here's the thing. Don't speak, don't interrupt, ordering her again. Listen, ordering her again. While you're gone... You're going to have these people here, right? I have the key to the front door. These are my kids. I call the cops. Most of my belongings are in here. Your address is on my ID. I have mail in my truck that prove that I legally live here. When I bring the cops here, threat, the cops are going to walk in the house with me and say, yeah, this kid legally lives here. His belongings are in here. These are his kids. They're going to take a look at your crazy fucking babysitters and they're going to say, what the fuck's going on, Mike? You've got to fix this. I'm going to ask them to leave because I'm going to say you don't have my consent or my permission to watch my kids. I don't trust you unless you can go give me a drug test right now in front of this officer. Rose, clearly exasperated by the circular nature of this conversation and the fact that she's not getting anywhere, sighs. That, of course, is a threat to control. And he then sees that she's looking at her daughter, which immediately wounds him because her attention is no longer on him. He responds with ignited fury. Look at me. Look at me, Rose. Don't look at her, meaning the daughter. She doesn't have any power yet. Now, his reference to her not having power is part of his inflated sense of his own power by suggesting that he's the one with the power, so you ought to be paying attention to me. She doesn't have any, so what are you having regard to her for? Rose, not unreasonably, explains, I'm taking care of my daughter, Mike, exhibiting her emotional empathy. Mike responds, look at me, again, ordering her around. She doesn't have any power. I got the power. Demonstrating again his inflated sense of his own importance and ability. Rose consoles her daughter, there you go, baby. Mike, I got the power, you fucking robot blue-eyed dragon. Insult, I got the fucking power, look at me. 
direct assertion of control ordering around. Rose, did you just call me a dragon? Challenge fuel. Mike, look at me. Look at me. You only want to do the opposite of what I stand for and oppose because you only do it to piss me off. Insult. He's the victim in all of this. She's the perpetrator. Rose, you're just sitting here harassing me. Mike, then let me harass you and get this off my chest because I feel a lot better after I do it. So he even would admit that he's harassing her, but it's all about what he needs. Once again, she sighs. Mike, okay, so here's the thing. Either way, you lose. We can do this the easy way, or we can do this the really, really nasty, ugly, hard way. And given the option, with my graces, oh, aren't we fortunate that you're so all-powerful and all-knowing, Mike, giving this grace. And my whatever I have in me to do this the easiest way. I don't want to have to do this. You are forcing me to do this. Blame shifting. You made me hit you. You made me have an affair. The standard wording of a narcissist. Literally forcing my hand. Well, she's not literally forcing his hand. If she was literally forcing his hand, she would have hold of his hand and would be moving it, once again showing that he's not very bright. The people that you recommend, the people that you consider, these people are a million times worse than me than you can even imagine. Triangulation once again. The bedroom tirade. Rose, attempting to leave for work, finds herself subjected to the narcissist's attempts to stop her leaving because her departure would be a threat to control. And once again, you see the likely lower mid-ranger exhibiting heated, ignited fury and using base manipulations to keep her in situ. An excellent opportunity to hear a narcissist and victim and the various manipulations as analysed by me. Please do ensure that this is shared, that you give this video a like, and share your observations in the comments about what you draw from this video. It's very important for work like this reaches as many people as possible, and therefore your involvement in bringing it to the attention of other people and allowing them to understand the analysis that I provide is very much necessary. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.